All right, there we go. So with uh, Jock and Delic incoming, inevitable, it's inevitable. Um, I'm gonna try to plow through the whole catalog of uh, talk a little bit about each album. Not right now, but I'm gonna do one for every every album. I, I covered uh, Not of This Earth the other day. Not really reviews, just kind of talking about stuff. You know, I do these while I'm out here walking around, so I don't have like notes on me. All that shit, you can find that on Wikipedia or whatever. But today is another strange chapter in a history of strange chapters. Strawberries, which is my favorite damn album. And I would say uh, in some ways it's objectively their best, at least post uh, Brian Robertson. It took me way too long to think of that name. Oh my God. Yeah, it's the, it's the best post Brian um, album. So, going into this, uh, they were in a, a weird, weird position, as they, as they always are, right? Captain Sensible had uh, made this come off a solo album, um, which ended up being, let me get out of the way here and try to find a spot where I can more fall into a herd. Um, he released a solo album that ended up being super, super successful. Uh, essentially making him a pop star in the UK. Uh, number one singles, um, the TV shows, he's a judge on this and that, he's a uh, host on this and that, like, he was a pop star, he became a pop star. Really bizarre, right? Um, so, his manager decided he was gonna, um, well, he offered his services to the dam. Uh, to take them over, seeing as Captain uh, was remaining in the band despite becoming this breakout pop star. So they took him up on it. It probably sounded like a good idea at the time, but, uh, you know, they were never going to get the... Um... How's my Alzheimer's doing today? The thing is, like, I'll lose, like, a regular, just a regular word and, like, uh, I'll struggle to find it. Like, I don't have something else I can lay back on. Well, because I get frustrated, because I'm like, why can't I think of that word? I could easily just, you know, pivot to another one that means the same thing, but it just, it, it grinds my gears. It fucking grinds my gears. So anyway, um, yeah, the thing about that is he was always going to put uh, Captain first, right? And the other thing, too, is that Captain's image uh, as a pop star was very kid-friendly, like uh, family-friendly kind of. He was sort of like this goofy, sort of, like for kids, like like kids liked him, right? Um, and he was charting number one singles, uh, Happy Talk, What, um, What, W-O-T, and uh, a Christmas single. It, it's really bizarre how that happened. But anyway, so they go in to record uh, Strawberries and Another thing that's happening is uh, they were out of a label before they went in to record this. Rat and his dad were like managing the band at the time and they were like shopping for labels. And um, Paul Gray, uh, who was a bass player at the time, he ended up getting a deal for them through his girlfriend that uh, worked at, at the label they, they went on to uh, sign with. And this caused problems uh, because Rat uh, he wanted to be the one to get them a deal, although he wasn't at the time. It probably ended up being like a money thing. Like the reason he wanted to, to orchestrate the deal for them is probably because it would have benefited him more. So in this way, uh, you know, getting a label outside the purview of Rat and his dad, uh, he probably lost out on some kind of money, which kind of makes you think like, well, why are you, you know, what were you going to do? He's shady, that guy. I, you know, I've touched on that before. But um, so anyway, there was a lot of friction there, which ended up uh, leading to Paul just leaving, leaving the band. So you know, that's good, right? So anyway, um, the album itself is like it's their most like garage band type of album, like it's in a sense of like the '60s American garage band stuff, like the Seeds and Sky Saxon. It's that kind of thing. Uh, there's some punk stuff left, and uh, there's also some goth in there. You know, they hadn't gone full goth yet, but there are songs in there like Dog, 
that uh, that song in particular is uh, based on a character from uh, Interview with the Vampire. And it's a vampire, not the vampire. I'm not going along with this uh, reality switch. But, um, yeah, it, it has a, it's kind of a mishmash of styles, but it works, you know. Um, the first single uh, was a song called uh, Dozen Girls, which, uh, I don't know, I would have went with Stranger on the Town because I think that's one of their best songs ever. Uh, it's just a world beater, that song. I love that tune. But not just because I love it, but I think it's, it would have been good as a single, too. There's a couple of different versions of Dozen Girls. The single version at the end, they, uh, in the coda, um, Dave yells out different uh, girls' names. They don't have that on the album. The album has a different kind of end. It's uh, one of that Jesus Christ superstar flying down the street, my Yamaha, cops are coming, I don't care, I got pulled through underwear. It's that thing, you know, that old, that old uh, schoolyard fun chestnut. Um, so, it didn't really do anything for them. Uh, they went on tour for it. Uh, it, it didn't help. In fact, you know, the, the captain effect didn't really help them. And in a lot of ways, it hurt them because they would see the dance playing and Captain Sensible and like families would go and stuff. And, you know, a damn show isn't really family friendly. So it was causing a problem, you know, uh, because a lot, of, a lot more people knew Captain than The Damned at this point. I mean, The Damned was known in rock and punk circles, but uh, the kind of uh, audience Captain had cultivated in a very short period of time were like, you know, the, uh, the kind of the crowd that would go to see imagination movers or something, that kind of thing. So this was like horror, you know? Uh, Captain would be gone by the end of the year. Oh, no. He would stay with them until 83. I think the last show he did was like that no nukes thing with them. They'd had, uh, they had some free concert. Uh, I forget where, but it was like, like a no nukes benefit kind of concert. And, um, what am I going to do here? Okay, good. And, uh, I think that was the last show he did with them. And Roman Jug, who was a keyboard player, who was... He had been uh, brought into the band officially uh, while Captain was still in it. And in fact, they wrote a song together that would end up on Phantasmagoria, uh, Is It a Dream? And um, he switched to guitar, uh, taking Captain's place, while still also playing keyboards. Uh, Roman Jug is just great. He's a very talented guy. He's a great musician, got a, a good mind for hooks and stuff, and... He was a great addition. I mean, if you're going to lose Captain, that's a huge blow. Um, he's, you know, I, I hate when people say, like, this guy's the heart. This guy's the head. This guy's the soul. But when they talk about bands, you know, yeah, they'll, they'll try to break up the members to, to say this guy does this and that. But the Captain was, like, the heart, kind of. Uh, he had a sense of humor thing, which would be completely absent uh, for the next uh, few albums the band would do. Pretty much, like anything had some of that on there when uh, Gigolo was a little bit um, humorous. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Strawberries comes out. Uh, the single, I think, Dozen Girls didn't get charted in the UK, but not super high. Um, was there a second single? Yeah, I don't think they worked it very well. Uh, it's a similar problem with all their stuff. All the potential in the world is there, and the business side kind of lets them down. Uh, although, although things would change for them with the uh, next album when they signed to MCA for Phantasmagoria, but that's you know that's a different story. But yeah, Strawberries is, is great. I love that album. It's a perfect mix of everything they were doing back then. Uh, I said earlier that it was kind of all over the place, but, but it's not all over the place. It has a lot of different sounds and styles, but it's, it has a cohesiveness, too, to it. Um, if you never heard it, like, that's the one, that's the one to listen to. You know, once you're done with the, the sort of groundbreaking Brian James stuff. 
The cover of the album is interesting. It has a, a pig with a strawberry on its head. The idea behind that was they were doing some shows on the, the Black Album tour, previous album, and whenever they would play their material that wasn't like the punk rock stuff, you know, the crowd wasn't responsive to it. And I mean, I'd say objectively, some of those songs were a lot, lot better than the sort of simple punk stuff they were doing, a lot more involved, a lot more musicality to them, which doesn't always mean it's good, but uh, in their case, it, it did. Um, and the weird thing about punk rock is like, it's always talked about as like freedom and, and do your own thing. But then when you do your own thing, uh, people say you're not punk rock. It's the most elitist gate caps kind of music there is. And it, uh, it presents itself as the exact opposite. Still that way today. In fact, punk rock today is taking a really weird turn. Like it used to be like anti-corporation, anti-the man. Now it's like, they are the man. You know, they love the corporations. You know, they'll tell you, put your mask on, get triple vaxxed or else you're a bigot. It's really weird. Social justice um, or just, you know, flourishes there. And I, it's not actual social justice. It's just social justice in name only. It basically, I mean, current social justice movement is just, it's uh, fascism. It's fascism. It's funny because that's what they say they fight against, but they don't understand politics, you know. A lot of young people there that just, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into that. But the thing is, uh, people weren't super receptive to their non-punk material. So uh, David said it's like the uh, throwing strawberries before pigs, which is a takeoff on the pearls before swine thing, of course. So that, that's what gave him the idea for the album cover. When he bought the album, uh, the sleeve, the vinyl, uh, was strawberry scented. Really cool idea. Um, but yeah, that, that album, like, there's not a bad song on it. And there are a lot of songs that they still play today. Um, it's my favorite, like I said earlier. And it's just, I wish they could have maybe gotten a few more records out, or at least one more during this period with uh, that lineup. The Paul Gray, Rat, Sensible, Vanian lineup, because they were onto something there. They were onto something, but but Captain's solo career was bringing in the the dosh for him. So push came to shove. He had to move on and do that, uh, leaving the damned in uh, a predicament they were used to, um, being able to, you know, do well with shows, but not having much of a presence uh, in with the record buying uh, industry and uh, but that would change uh, luck would luck would come around for them uh, shortly shortly after that album but that's next time or maybe not next time I'm gonna be jumping around a bit that's strawberries it's fucking good don't play my teacher blame this cool